At age 18, Sister Mary Margaret Kruper took her sacred vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, and service to the poor, sick, and uneducated, and became a nun. For nearly 30 years, she dedicated herself to the students at St. James Catholic School in Torrance, California. But unbeknownst to the tight-knit community who respected and admired her, Sister Mary Margaret had a dark secret. 20 miles southwest of downtown LA, in the city of Torrance, is St. James Catholic School. It's a small school community of just over 300 students, from kindergarten to grade 8. Sister Mary Margaret Kruper had been the principal from 1990 to 2018. During that time, she became a highly respected figure and leader of the local community. The community had nothing but glowingly positive things to say about her and her nearly 30 years of dedication to St. James. Sister Mary Margaret knew every last detail about how the school operated. She was in charge of the curriculum and emphasized religious development and instilling good morals in the students. She hired teachers and evaluated existing staff. She handled all the money that came into the school through tuition fees, donations, and fundraisers. She also oversaw the St. James Convent account, a separate savings account that specifically funded the living expenses of nuns who worked at the school, as they were not allowed to have their own private income. Students at the school knew Sister Mary Margaret to be a kind woman, unless you crossed her. She could be very strict and was known to give out harsh punishments for minor infractions. Failing to tuck in your chair or tuck in your shirt could result in no recess. Sister Mary Margaret didn't like loud chit chat and cluttered desks. Even though her disciplinary style was somewhat antiquated, she was still beloved in the community. The school opened in September 1918 and gradually expanded over the next century, but fell behind when it came to upgrading to modern technology and facilities. In the 2010s, the school was still using textbooks from the 80s. The computers were old and slow, and the broken sports equipment was never replaced. The students were rarely able to go on field trips due to lack of funds. The school's courtyard desperately needed an awning so the children could play and eat protected from the harsh Southern Californian sun. During Sister Mary Margaret's tenure, she appealed to parents and the wider community for donations, and the school received a lot of donations. After all, everyone wanted what was best for the kids. The school held many, many fundraising events like festivals, raffles, jogathons, sport days, and other events. One person was particularly lucky when it came to raffles. The school's vice principal and eighth grade teacher, Sister Lana Chang, won the biggest annual raffle three years in a row. One year, Sister Mary Margaret even organized a casino night. They raised a lot of money and of course had a lot of fun, but it did seem a little contradictory for this Catholic elementary school run by nuns to host a casino night. But the parents who volunteered their time and money were eager to help. They had no reason to think something was amiss and dutifully handed over wads of cash to Sister Mary Margaret at the end of each fundraiser event. Year after year, the school community would gather at these events to raise money to help give the students a better education experience, but it just never seemed to be enough. The textbooks and technology were never updated. The awning was never built to give the kids shade in the summer. Casino night wasn't the only thing that didn't quite align with Sister Mary Margaret's vows. She regularly went on some rather luxurious holidays and would brag about them. She brought photos in to show the students and parents. She'd flipped through dozens of snaps of her holidaying around the United States and even Europe. Sometimes she brought along Sister Lana Chang. Sister Mary Margaret and Sister Lana shared a townhouse off campus and both drove matching white Volvos. Mary would explain that she had a very rich and very generous uncle who funded her holidays and living expenses as she herself wasn't paid a salary. In 2018, Sister Mary Margaret retired. By now, she was in her late 70s, but the news still shocked and saddened the community. To prepare for the incoming principal, the Archdiocese or Catholic District of Los Angeles conducted a routine financial review of St. James Catholic School. That was when things began to unravel. 
When Mary heard about the review, she frantically asked staff at the school to alter and destroy financial records, which of course sparked suspicion. Staff reported the incident to Monsignor Michael Myers, the pastor at St. James Church. Around the same time, a parent at St. James School noticed that an old tuition check had an endorsement on the back that didn't match the details of the school's primary bank account. A forensic auditor was brought in and revealed more irregularities. The convent savings account that was meant to pay for the nun's living expenses had become long overlooked since it was first opened in the late 90s. Since Mary was the only one with access to the account, its existence and activity came as a surprise to the church authorities. There were countless missing receipts. Other parents began to look through old checks and found more unfamiliar bank account details. For 10 years, Mary Margaret Krupa had been funneling money from tuition fees, donations, and school fundraisers into the forgotten convent savings account. She would then help herself to that money. She didn't use the stolen funds because she was struggling to make ends meet, but rather she was squandering it away on personal expenses and frequent gambling trips to Las Vegas, Reno, Temecula, and Lake Tahoe. Greed and gambling addiction had caused Mary to abandon her commandments and vow of poverty, and there was definitely no rich uncle. To cover her tracks, she fudged the numbers on monthly and annual reports that she had to turn into the St. James administration. Of course, the school and church administration had full trust in Sister Mary Margaret and believed she was properly managing the school's finances and assets. But the wads of cash that volunteers collected at the school's many fundraisers went straight into Mary's pockets. Generous donations that were given to help provide the students with better facilities never made it into the school's bank account either. Parents even recalled that Sister Mary Margaret offered discounts on school tuition fees if they could pay in cash. Sister Lana Chang, who had taught at the school for 20 years and retired at the same time as Mary, was in on the scheme and often went along on the gambling trips. When Mary was confronted, she admitted to it all, but claimed that she was owed the money because of the salary difference between nuns and priests. However, she eventually acknowledged that she had a severe gambling problem, realized the magnitude of what she had done and accepted full responsibility. For decades, she had denied the students of St. James Catholic School the quality of education that they deserved and could have had. Monsignor Myers issued a letter to the families of the school to formally announce the news. In the letter, he said that the nuns were deeply sorry and asked for prayers and forgiveness. He also claimed that the school didn't suffer any loss of educational resources or opportunities. Rumors began to swirl around Torrance. It was hard to believe an elderly nun who was always so strict when it came to the rules. She was stealing from an elementary school to go on lavish Vegas trips? It was always suspected that Mary and Lana were gamblers, but it was generally assumed that the casinos comped them because they were nuns. Nobody thought anything sinister was going on. Sister Mary Margaret had devoted her life to teaching young children what's right and wrong. Thou shall not steal. Yet when it came to her own life, she chose to break the law. The church cooperated with federal investigators to determine exactly how much money was stolen over the years. From 2008 to 2018, Sister Mary Margaret embezzled more than $835,000 from the institution she had vowed to serve. Federal prosecutors said that Mary stole the equivalent of 14 students' tuition fees per year. Members of the church and school community were divided. Many were understandably outraged, but Sister Mary Margaret had her fair share of supporters too who believed the good she did outweighed the bad and that she should be forgiven. The nuns order Sister of St. Joseph's Corondolet released a statement condemning their actions and agreed to reimburse the $835,000 to the school. Mary Margaret Krupa and Lana Chang were both moved to a convent home under strict supervision and were also dismissed from all public religious work. Mary began therapy for her gambling addiction. The church and archdiocese of LA chose not to press criminal charges, but federal prosecutors were already getting their case ready. In July 2021, Mary pleaded guilty to one count of wire fraud and one count of money laundering and was facing a maximum sentence of 40 years in federal prison. 
Lana Chang, the vice principal who was initially implicated, was not charged. The prosecutor, Assistant U.S. Attorney Poonam Kumar, painted a picture of Sister Mary Margaret's repetitive and deceptive behavior. Quote, this was a manifestation of greed. She wanted more than she had and abused the trust of the community. But Mary's lawyer, Mark Byrne, insisted that the combination of a gambling addiction and poor mental function due to old age clouded her judgment. He also insisted that the quality of education at St. James was unaffected. At the sentencing hearing via Zoom, Mary Margaret Krupa was remorseful and made no excuses. Several parents and former students from the school spoke at the hearing and were split on their feelings. Some felt betrayed and described how their faith was shaken. They believed Mary didn't deserve special treatment because of her status. But others pledged their support for the nun who had done so much good for the school and clung to the lessons in forgiveness that are taught by the church. Judge Otis Wright spoke about the conflict he felt because of his Roman Catholic upbringing and struggled to determine an appropriate sentence for Mary. He said, quote, I don't look at nuns as ordinary people and stated that he couldn't judge her on, quote, the worst thing she had done in her life alone. He took into account her 62 years of service as a nun and educator and the fact that she was 80 years old. At the end, Judge Wright sentenced Mary Margaret Krupa to just one year and one day in prison, even though prosecutors had requested two years. She was also ordered to pay $835,000 in restitution 